The reviews are in. Major tech outlets and big YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips, Retro Game Core, and ETA Prime have got their hands on the ROG Ally. And I have to say that I'm excited to play with it, especially after hearing everything these reviewers have had to say about it. And I am glad that the Ally exists. Truly, I am. I mean, there's going to be a lot of guffawing in the comments because some people seem to think that I'm a Steam Deck fanboy. And if you're gonna deride me for anything, let's have some perspective about it. I'm a Linux zealot. There's a difference. But in all seriousness, I think that the Ally is a good thing. Not just for handheld gaming, but also for Valve in particular. And that's because we've seen what happens when Valve goes unchallenged. For over a decade, they kind of stagnated, right? Especially during the Xbox 360 era. They rolled out new features on Steam and yeah, whatever. But over time, Valve just kind of grew sedentary and complacent. They stopped releasing new games and they kind of let PC gaming just deteriorate for a long stretch of time. Then Epic came along with the Epic Game Store and Valve suddenly came back to life. They really did go through a renaissance of sorts. They released a new Half-Life game, they created the Steam Deck, and now there are other Valve games on the horizon, which is really exciting. All of this has been truly wonderful to watch as a Half-Life, Portal, and Linux fan. And while there are probably folks who enjoy Epic's offerings in this space, the Epic Store is not a real competitor to Steam. Not really. Steam is a platform that provides an entire ecosystem of software and services for both game developers and players. Epic, on the other hand, is a storefront and a launcher that only got a shopping cart feature in December of 2021, years after the store became publicly available. But the question is, why am I talking about Epic here? It's because I think that the Epic store was a catfish to Valve's Atlantic Cod. They used to tank uh, Cod from Alaska all the way to China. They'd keep them in vats in the ship. By the time the codfish reached China, the, the flesh was, was mush and tasteless. So this guy came up with the idea that if you put these cods in these big vats, put some catfish in with them, and the catfish will keep the cod agile. That's the origin of the term catfish in the modern sense, and that's exactly what happened with Valve and Epic. But I think that the ally is a catfish too, in both the colloquial sense of the word as well as its origin. Not only because it's going to keep Valve on its toes, but also because much like someone who uses social media to pretend to be something they're not, the ally is doing marketing to deceive you. My friend Fan the Deck made a great video about all the ways that uh, Asus has lied to us about the ally. But I want to talk about one thing specifically. Asus wants you to think that the ally is a 1080p device. And furthermore, that that bigger number makes it better than the Steam Deck. But according to all the reviews that I've seen, that's simply not the case. Sure, the screen itself is 1080p and even 120 hertz, but most AAA games need to be run at 720p at medium or even low settings, unless you're willing to have a 40 minute battery life or keep it charging at all times. On the flip side, you can get up to seven hours of battery life from the Steam Deck by adjusting a few options in the quick access menu. You'll be hard pressed to get even three hours of battery life on the lowest TDP settings with the Ally. Not to mention, there's no guarantee you won't end up with a worse experience at those settings compared to the deck. That doesn't really sound competitive to me. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing that the Ally has higher specifications. Uh, we'll talk about why that's actually a really good thing for the handheld gaming scene in a minute. But you might be tempted to ask, well, who really cares about battery life? I'm just going to keep it plugged in so that I can get the full 120 hertz experience at 1080p. And I mean, that's great, I mean, good for you, but I would argue that you're not really the kind of person who is going to be happy with the Steam Deck in the first place. If you're worried about specs over performance, the deck was never going to impress you. And that's another reason that the Ally really isn't a competitor. In my opinion, it's appealing to a completely different market segment. I'd rather have a consistent 800p 40 FPS with a much longer battery life. In fact, I'm the kind of person who really doesn't care about numbers at all. I'm more of a feel guy. If it feels good to me, you couldn't pay me to care what the numbers are. And that's who the Steam Deck is targeting. If I'm being completely honest, more of a console gamer than a PC gamer. And that's why I found Retro Game Core's review of the Ally so telling. In the review, he specifically said, and then also because we have it, I wanna try out that 120 hertz refresh rate too. And for many games, this will work out pretty well. You can use the lowest power profile to play some of these lightweight indie games. But I have to be honest, when I turn on 120 hertz, I cannot tell the difference. 
And that was something that surprised me because when I do play like say on my PS5 at 120 hertz, I can definitely tell the difference. But I think here with this smaller screen, I really wasn't seeing it. And honestly, I wasn't really sure what I was expecting here, but all the same, I just didn't see the difference. It's almost as if different form factors have different requirements for frame rates, resolutions, and settings. Go figure. But I'm not gonna get too deep into this argument because I've made videos about it. You can check it out up here. The fact is the Ally will materially help the Steam Deck, specifically the Steam Deck 2. Now we're still years away from a Steam Deck 2 and I think that that's a good thing. Honestly, new hardware from Valve right now would be harmful to their overall goals with what they're doing here. I mean, and they know it too. I don't want a incremental update every year for the Steam Deck and neither does Valve. What they want is generational leaps for the Steam Deck. The Ally though is an important stepping stone on the path to the Steam Deck too. Especially because having a VRR display capable of 120 Hertz is fundamental to the next iteration of the hardware in my opinion for the Steam Deck 2. First, because 120 is evenly divisible by 30, 40, and even 60 FPS. So the underclocking of the screen that the Steam Deck does to achieve 40 FPS wouldn't actually be necessary on 120 Hertz display. But it also means that there's an incredibly popular device that comes with 120 Hertz VR display. Ultimately, that will mean that there's a power efficient driver that'll become available for Linux if it already isn't there. And crucially, that VR support is going to gain more widespread adoption across Linux distributions. And let's be honest, as it stands right now, VRR could use some improvement in the Linux space. So I suspect that Linux devs and distro maintainers will be adding the code needed to make VRR just work. And as seems to be the Linux way, we're probably gonna end up with an impressively awesome implementation of VRR, especially when you compare it to the way Windows handles it. Then Valve can release the Steam Deck 2 with a VRR screen that's truly game changing. The same will hold true for the other hardware that the Ally comes with. I don't know what the state of Zen 4 or Z1 or Z1 Extreme looks like in the Linux kernel right now, but as it matures, the next iteration of the kernel should yield incredible performance on Linux, and it will provide an excellent base for any potential deck sequel. The Ally provides an incentive for Linux engineers and enthusiasts alike to optimize drivers for the device, and it's only a matter of time before the Ally will see better performance and hardware support on our favorite penguin flavored OS rather than Windows. In the meantime, the question is what can or even what should Valve do to not get totally lost in the hype surrounding the Ally? Well, the simplest answer, I think, is software updates. Lots of them. Software is the deck's secret sauce, especially Linux. Valve's got complete control over the deck's firmware, drivers, API environment, operating system, you name it. They can optimize the Steam Deck in any way they see fit. If they keep adding awesome software features, they will always have a leg up against other handheld PCs. This all means that they can squeeze more performance out of the silicon. Three years from now, when the Ally 3 is making its debut, Windows 11 will have grown ever more bloated and today's hardware will have started showing its age. Meanwhile, while the Deck 2 may have premiered by then, today's Deck will still be as performant as always, with the exception of maybe the latest and greatest AAA games. That is unless Valve takes my next recommendation to heart. We need a new deck verified tier. They should call it something like deck certified or maybe they could call it deck platinum, whatever, it doesn't really matter what it's called, but what it should do is the following. First, Valve needs to define an API that lets Steam modify a game's settings, such as display resolution, graphic settings, music volume, key bindings, etc. And Platinum games need to support 100% of this API. This would allow the SteamOS environment to actually tell games what resolutions they should be playing games at, as well as defining other settings uh, at the OS level. It would make the SteamOS a more console-like experience, and that's what Valve's striving for here. Next, Platinum games need to not only be playable on deck, but specifically optimized for the hardware. In particular, the developers should have a performance profile that is automatically configured when launching the game, as well as provide recommended graphical settings that are automatically applied. Next, Platinum games should strip out unnecessary high resolution assets that will never get used on the deck in order to save disk space. But there should also be an option in the game's Steam settings to switch to the regular PC assets. 
then I believe platinum rated games need to go through a stringent certification process that mirrors what Xbox, PlayStation, and to a lesser extent, Switch games go through. Stability, playability, UI, and accessibility testing at a minimum. Now, getting platinum status should be an entirely optional for developers, but there should be incentives for devs to go for it. Because as we've seen, leaving devs to support the Steam Deck on their own results in less than optimal support. First, I think that Platinum Games should get a priority spot in the Great on Deck store section. And this one's a long shot, but I think it would have a real impact on developer support. Valve could change up their revenue share model with Platinum rated games. Instead of Valve taking 30% of a cut, they could take 20 or 15% of a cut for any game that's sold that's ranked Platinum. And the last thing that Valve can do to not get lost in the fray here with new hardware coming out is that they could lower the price of each Steam Deck model. Perhaps they could shave $25, $50, maybe even $75 off of each thing. Then they could also add a one terabyte version that lives at the highest end tier. If Valve widens the gap between the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally and any, any other Z1 powered device, it would add perceived value to the Steam Deck. But those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear yours. Leave me a comment and let me know below. While you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube that you wanna see more videos just like this one. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. Now, I wanna give a special shout out to Dan Henschel for his sustained high level support of this show. It's because of Dan and the 73 other members that I'm able to keep the lights on here and we have a lot of lights, so thank you. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to get your name listed over here, you can use the links below to become a channel member. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.